The authorities have arrested or detained at least 90 Christians in recent weeks following raids on three provinces. The Lao authorities see evangelical Christianity as a plot to undermine the communist revolution. During a recent fact-finding visit to Laos, Release International met Abigail, not her real name, whose husband was murdered for his faith. Abigail, whose identity we're protecting, is continuing her husband's work, looking after the churches he set up. He was away on church business when news came that his body had been found. He'd been brutally murdered. Before he left, Abigail sensed a dread that something like this could happen. I always say, please don't come home late, because you have enemies who will try to kill you. Don't worry, he replied, but I said, how can I not worry, because our children are still young. If something happened to you, how will I live? To begin with, Abigail was distraught and angry. I was crying, crying and crying, and I was asking God why he took my husband away, even he is the one that the church and the people need more than me. Sometimes I get really angry, and also my children, but I always tell them the punishment is up to God, not up to us. Even today, Abigail doesn't know who killed her husband, though she has her suspicions. The reason I believe he was killed because he served God. The church is going well. We have been training more Christian disciples and leaders. Now Abigail has taken on her husband's work, caring for the Christians he brought to the Lord. Days after his death, she called for Christians in Laos to continue to fearlessly preach the gospel. Her message today is from Corinthians 13. Love keeps no record of any wrongs. But what if Abigail were to come face to face with her husband's killer? What would she tell him? I would tell him about the God's love. Even like I did something wrong and then he always forgive me. So I would tell him I love him because God loves him too. And God will forgive him. Christians in Laos face a choice of worshipping in churches heavily restricted by the state or going underground. The stakes are high. They risk being seen as enemies of the state, of coming under surveillance, being arrested, imprisoned without trial, and tortured to renounce their faith. But the harder the authorities stamp on Christianity, the more it spreads. The work Abigail's husband began will continue. I don't know who killed him, but I only know that God has planned for the church especially for the people to grow up and become strong in the faith.